the tide comes in, the water temperature is going to drop. There are worms here, different kinds of worms. If you do any salty water fishing, you might get clam worms that have lots of legs and they have a pincher. There are scale worms, which are really great old uh, family of worms that have these plates on them. If I find one, I'll do a close-up of it. And the cormorants are opening their wings in the sunshine to dry off. So let's see what I can find. Fingers crossed I find a hermit crab. I found a hermit crab. The hermit crab is living in this little periwinkle shell. See him saying hi. Hermit crabs have no way to harm you. Their claws are really tiny. They're the recyclers out here. They eat little bits of dead plants and animals. Can you see his little claw? His long antenna. So he is a crustacean, but he doesn't have a carapace all over his body. He doesn't have an exoskeleton all over his body. It does not cover his abdomen. So what hermit crabs need to do is they need to find a mollusk shell, the snail shell where the snail had died, and then he sticks his slimy little abdomen inside that shell and kind of like eh, 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 see if it fits. And if it does, he'll just live in that shell till he gets a little bit bigger. So hermit crabs are amazing. They're called hermit because there's only one crab in each one of the snail shells. So hermit means alone or solitary. I don't see any more, but I'm hoping that there'll be more in here because it's such a warm day today. Very unusual for November that they may come and um, be more active. I'm gonna put him down. Thank so you. there are some spongy organisms here. There's actual sponge and there's something else that's called a tunicate and it makes like a case or a tunic of spongy-like material. But I think that this is actual sponge and there's some more underneath that rock that's over there. You can see some orange underneath the little slipper shells. And so there's a lot of microscopic organisms that live here. So sponges and tunicates are a whole bunch of animals that live together in this little body. And they have tiny little microscopic flagella, which are kind of like little feathery body parts or little whip body parts. And they draw the water to the organisms and the organisms eat what's in the water. Oh, did you see the crab move? There's one of those Asian shore crabs. I found some more things for us to look at. And I'm assuming that this guy was eaten probably by a gull. Can you see the little teeth around the edge of the shell? This is a rock crab and they get to be really big. If you eat crabs, you may be eating a rock crab. They have a cousin who has little serrated edges so instead of point 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 it's like da 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 so it has little um i guess serrated is all i can say edges so when it's point 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 it's a rock crab and it has the little necklace like the green crab does too and when i flip it over i know it was a gull because that's what the gulls do they're like we want the good stuff two shells of a big predator and that lives out here I gotta keep watching my trays because the tide is coming in. These are moon snails, and I call them shark eye moon snails because they have that dark dot. When you look at a moon snail, like if you've ever been to the Audubon place in West Barnstable, out on the mud flats, you can find moon snails. You see a little line dug out of the sand, like a, a, a trail, and then if you dig at the end of it, you're gonna dig up a moon snail. And they look like they can't even fit inside their shell. Their bodies are huge, huge, huge. And they smother the clams that they eat. If they can't smother them, then they'll go through the scrape, scrape, scrape. Put a little bit of shell softener. Scrape, scrape, scrape. A little bit of shell softener. Scrape, scrape, I'm through. Inject the digestive juices. Make the soup. 
suck it back up. So moon snails are great. I'm gonna leave these here though because there are organisms that are living inside of them. I hope you've enjoyed learning about tidal pools. I just have a few things that I wanted to go over with you before I say goodbye till you see me um, again when I'm answering questions. First, I wanted to just go over the crabs that we saw, um, or pieces of the crabs in the tidal pools. We saw the green crab with the five points, and I found a shell for a rock crab, and here's the Jonah with its serrated edges. So we have green crab, the Asian shore crab, the rock crab. Sometimes in the tidal pools we find the shells, if not a live spider crab, which is a detritivore. It eats little pieces of dead stuff, has no way to harm us. We also find young northern lobsters. The bigger lobsters only come in at night and they stay out in the deeper water. We also saw the hermit crab, and there's two species, this long clawed, and then out in deeper water, there's the one that has the big flat claw. And we also looked at barnacles. Barnacles feed with their feathery appendage that's called a cilia, and um, they stick it out of the opening, which is like an eye with two lids of their shell. And remember that they make their shell out of materials they find in seawater, and they eat microscopic organisms that live in seawater. This guy is moved into a mollusk shell, um, a snail shell, and he'll have to move out when he gets larger. So all of these are crustaceans, different kinds of crustaceans. We also saw some bivalves. We saw blue mussels living in the tidal pool. We saw the, um, well, we talked about the hard shell clam, and I did find a shell from a soft shell clam. These are the steamers that we eat. Sometimes people have coag chowder. We also saw lots of periwinkles. These guys have two shells. They're all the bivalves. These guys just have one, and they are the univalve or gastropods. We saw periwinkles. And we talked about that if you find a periwinkle that has two holes instead of the one door, that that one was eaten by their cousins. Periwinkles are called the moo cows of the sea because they graze on algae. They're plant eaters, also known as herbivores. And let me just reintroduce our predators here. Oh, no, one more. We have the little slipper shell or the little boat shell. And that was the one that's on the rocks in stacks. The one at the bottom is always the female, and then there's males stacked up on top. And because they don't move around, they just open their shell a little bit, and in comes seawater um, and organisms in the seawater that they eat, and then they can send it out again on the other side of their shell. So these guys are eating microscopic organisms. Here's the predators. Moon snail, the northern moon snail and I have what I call a dark eye or shark eye moon snail shell. It has this big lip here, which the other moon snail doesn't. And they grow, they keep adding materials as they get bigger and bigger. These guys are big predators. We also had, which we didn't find, a waved whelk. Waved whelks are big predators as well. All of these can use their radula, that mouth part, to drill into things like slipper shells and periwinkles. And then we had the dog whelk or dog winkle. This one we know ate what? Because it's a white shell. It was a barnacle eater, dog whelk. And then the oyster drill, which also makes holes and shells that we can find. So there are predators who rely on other organisms to eat. If a periwinkle, all the periwinkles or all the clams disappeared, then these organisms would be affected. We did not find the echinoderms. Uh, we did not find a daisy brittle star. We did not find the common sea star. And we don't have purple spined sea urchins here. I've seen them in Rhode Island. We do have green sea urchins. And these are just the tests. These are where the uh, spines 
all fell off when the organism died and it left this part called the test where there's big white bumps that's where the spines were attached and there are if you hold it up to the light you see little tiny holes those little tiny holes are where the tube feet came through this would have been the sea urchin's mouth this would have been where it takes in water on the um, sea stars they have a spot, an orange spot, and they're not red like this. They have an orange spot that takes in seawater. And then they have eye spots on each one of the tips of their legs. And they have five legs. There's different kinds of sea stars, as you can see. Daisy brittle star, this one I've had for a long, long time, so it's falling apart. Um, but they do live in the tidal pools. Um, but I think as the water gets colder, they go out. You often see them in the canal jetty, tucked up. We didn't find any um, sea slugs or nudibranchs. I have seen their eggs in the springtime. They're really, really beautiful blobby uh, eggs. And one time I found a nudibranch. It wasn't this species, uh, but sea slugs belong to, and when we turn the card over, gastropod. So they're a cousin to all of these guys. And then the last thing I wanted us to look at was, remember, we saw some sponge. This is the clam worm that you can buy in the bait store to use for fishing. Here's our little spirobus spirobus, little tube worm. And then we have coral, which I didn't find any of, but we do have a little coral. Um, it's not a reef building coral. Um, but we can find it from time to time in the tidal pool. So I hope you enjoyed your trip to the tidal pools. Didn't even have to get your feet wet. And I'll see you at the questioning.